It's been more than a year since I made a video looking at fake flash storage devices being sold online. Are these scams still around in 2023? Let's take a look and find out. Okay, short version. Yes, in 2023, water still flows downhill, the earth continues to rotate, Davis Bond is still dead, and fake flash device scams are now everywhere. And if anything, harder than ever to tell apart from the real thing. The device we're going to get for hands-on testing is this micro SD card that appeared in an Amazon ad on Instagram. Now in the past I've had things to say about the veracity of ads for dodgy online shop fronts that you might see on social media and this is one of those, but it's also just a regular ad from Amazon. So although I saw this ad on Instagram it could very easily have appeared anywhere else you see ads online. When I followed the link, it went through to an item that's fulfilled by Amazon, but sold by Denyi Langshang Mao. In the past, it used to be a lot clearer when you were buying something that was being supplied from Amazon's own stock versus something that was a marketplace or FBA deal. But over time, that difference has become less and less conspicuous. For a lot of people, it's an irrelevant detail. They're just buying a thing from Amazon. Anyway, what's immediately curious about this listing is that there are two capacity variants for the device, 64 gig and 982 gig, and they're both priced at $12.99. I suspect the 64 gig variant is genuine and the other one is actually the same hardware spoofed to report a higher capacity and silk screened with a different paint job. Anyway, I ordered it and we'll see in a moment what turned up. But let's take a quick look at the reviews, starting with I recently purchased the 982 gig waterproof memory card and I must say it has exceeded my expectations in several ways, blah, 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 blah. Definitely a fake review. Who writes that sort of praise about an SD card? Might even be AI generated, I think. I asked ChatGPT to write a five-star review and it had a very similar sort of feel to it. AI would typically just gush enthusiastically about every feature, even if it's not a remarkable or particularly useful feature. And other reviews were very similar, including Unexpected rain during a weekend trip. No issue, the waterproof feature had me covered. Mm-hmm. And Great value for money price for a micro SD card with so much extra storage. I can use with my new tablet to increase the amount of files I can keep on it. The files can be photos, music, ebook, and documents. I definitely won't run out of storage space now. It's good that the files are stored on the memory card, so you can just transfer the card to another device and all the files would already be there. Hmm, yes, remarkable. All of those remarkable things are unremarkably true of any flash storage device. So, fake reviews are plenty, but that doesn't necessarily make the item itself fake, of course. We'll get to that. Fake reviews are fast becoming pretty much the norm on Amazon, so meaningless, really. But there they are. What's slightly sadder is the reviews that probably aren't fake. There are loads of those where people appear to have bought the supposedly 982 gig device, given it a cursory glance, and then left a five-star review. These are probably actual scam victims. Anyway, let's see what happened when this device arrived. A package has arrived. In official Amazon packaging, because this has come from an Amazon distribution center. And this arrived the day after my order. So there's the thing, made in China, 982 gig external data storage. Okay, well, pretty powerful glue on that. And there, well, there's not even a box for it. And there we go, memory SD, 982 gig. There are some serial numbers on the back, so you might be able to search those and find out what this really is, because this isn't going to be real. Not for this capacity and that price, and especially not as there was one right next to it for the same price that was only 64 gig. Anyway, let's do some testing and find out what we got here. Okay, three custard creams later. I'm just going to plug this micro SD card into this passive adapter. This is just a thing that makes little pins into big pins. There's no electronics inside of this, it's just a connector. That enables me to plug it into this laptop. This is an old laptop I keep set aside for this kind of testing, which could be destructive. It's possible to find malware on devices like this. I did scan it off camera on a Linux machine. Couldn't find anything wrong with it apart from what I think is going to be obviously wrong, which is that the capacity is lying. There's the device. Now let's do what everybody says you should do, which is, oh, let's just check the properties. That will tell us the truth. Spoilers, it won't. So yeah, it says it's 982 gig or one, just over one terabyte, depending on how you measure it, terabytes or tebibytes. So have we got a genuine terabyte SD card here? I think almost certainly not. And this is the detail that eludes most people, is that what it says it is and what it actually is don't have to be the same thing. 
the card is able to report a false capacity to the host operating system and the host operating system has no way of verifying that other than writing files and checking them which is what I'm about to do now using H2TestW. Okay we're gonna select that drive we're going to do well I think it's probably a 64 gig drive so I think we should test 100 gig which is 100,000 meg okay so here we go now I could test the whole thing but typically the read write speed of these things is desperately slow and therefore we'd be there forever until the computer melts so we're going to test 100 gig of this drive and we'll see what happens okay well there it is it's failed just around the 60 gigabyte mark so yeah I think most likely there is only 64 gig of actual storage inside that device and it's been spoofed to read more than that so there we go completely as I expected and it's important to note that the only way you can detect these spoofs like this is by some sort of write test there isn't anything that you can do by checking properties on any operating system so it doesn't matter whether it's Windows or Linux or Mac OS or whatever those properties dialogues will always tell you what the thing says it is rather than what it actually is so I will let this test complete and we'll get the report out of it and I'll show you what that is and then we'll talk a little bit more about this scam so no surprises at all there. The item's fake and the fakery is exactly what I expected. A micro SD card with moderate capacity that's been spoofed to falsely report a larger capacity. If you just plug it in and check the properties, it will look like the larger capacity. If you try to test it by filling it up with files, it's quite likely the file directory will look normal. It will look as if all those files are there, but the content of some of those files will have already been lost. This is because for most storage devices like this, the metadata for the files is stored in a separate area at the lowest address in the memory. The file contents, the actual meat of the files, is stored elsewhere. And if that elsewhere happens to be off the edge of the genuine storage capacity, then it will either have been discarded and lost, or maybe written back over the top of something else at the bottom. But how does this happen? And why is it so hard to detect? Mostly, this is just because when the conventions and protocols for removable storage were devised, it seems like nobody imagined they would be abused in this way. So they were designed in such a way that your computer will just accept what it's told by the onboard controller of the removable storage device. In a way, that makes sense. When you go and buy a box of screws, you don't stand there in the store and count the screws. That would take too long. You just accept what it says on the label. When you plug in an external storage device, even one that appears to be really simple like this micro SD card, you're not just plugging in a chunk of storage. That storage is hidden away and controlled by another chip on board, a microcontroller that mediates the whole process of storing and retrieving data. Your computer never directly places a file on the storage. It hands it to the onboard controller and delegates the storage task. And because of this architecture, it never directly sees the storage itself to be able to just count it. It asks the onboard controller, what have you got? And that controller can be very easily reprogrammed just to tell a lie. So what happens when it does that and you give it more than 64 gig of files? In some cases, when it reaches the end, it just loops back to the start and begins overwriting and data that you wrote earlier is destroyed. In other cases, it just carries on trying to write past the end of the physical storage, but writing nothing into nowhere. Like if you're painting on a canvas and you tried painting off the edge, your brush might be loaded with paint and making all the right motions, but nothing's actually being painted anywhere. Okay, hasty addendum number one. I forgot to mention the other thing people sometimes suggest as a quick and easy test is to format the storage device. It's not an unreasonable assumption that formatting it would detect the problem, but it is unfortunately a wrong assumption. For most common file systems, which are what you would use in earnest for formatting an SD card, formatting is a write-only process. Your computer instructs the onboard controller to do some things. It goes off and probably tries to do those things, but they are all write operations. The process doesn't perform any kind of verification on the substance of the storage itself. So formatting is generally not a quick and easy test to detect these fakes. You can format this 982 gig drive and it will appear to succeed. So anyway, this device was faking its capacity and I claimed a refund. In the past, it's often been the case that a refund would be issued without any requirement to return the item, but this time I had to send it back. Return carriage was prepaid, all very straightforward. Sadly, though, there's no effective way to report fraudulent items to Amazon. There is a link to report incorrect product details, but those reports go straight to the seller. That is, the vendor who's selling, probably knowingly, fake products. So nothing much happens if you do that. Trying to talk to Amazon about it, which I have tried, is like trying to push a piece of string. In this case, all I really could do was leave a factual review about the product and make this video. Hasty addendum number two. I actually had to take the draft video down and add this because it's a doozy. A few days after getting my refund, I received an official email from Amazon. Allow me to read it to you in full. Hello, Atomic Shrimp. 
Thank you for submitting a review of Boju SD card, 982 gig, waterproof memory card, 982 gig, large capacity TF card, mini SD cards for cameras, dash cam, computers, PC, external data storage. We're sorry you did not have a positive experience. We investigated your concerns about product authenticity and the information we have indicates the product you received was authentic. As a result, we removed the review you submitted. This ensures that customer reviews remain as accurate as possible for the benefit of future customers. We appreciate your input and hope you will continue to submit valuable feedback about your experience shopping on Amazon. Thank you, Amazon UK. Unbelievable. Okay, once my 10 seconds of initial blind fury about this had subsided, I had a little think about it and I have three possible explanations for this. I think all of them relate to the fact that I submitted both a negative but entirely factual review, plus I went through the report incorrect product details process and tried to pick the options that seemed most appropriate. I think the review and the report collided and brought this to the attention of people or the system. Firstly, if the report went to the vendor, aka scammer, which I suspect to be the case for most types of report, this might have opened up a resolution process in which they could escalate and tag me as a troublemaker and be able to remove my review. Nextly, what happened here might just be the result of some stupid automated process. If the vendor, aka scammer, had somehow managed to scrape through some test of authenticity in the past, it might be that a negative review accompanied by a report of inauthenticity might be a combo that triggers automatic resolution. I think this is less likely since it took a couple of days to happen. Finally, the obvious, albeit rather cynical, possible explanation is that negative reviews impact profitability, and Amazon maybe took this action to protect their own interests. Profit at the expense of truth and integrity. But it can't be that, surely, can it? Those are the three possibilities that floated to the top of my own mind. Maybe it's not these, but something else, so please feel free to leave a comment with your own take on it. So yes, fake flash storage scams are still everywhere in 2023, and the capacity of genuine flash storage devices has increased, and the price of the genuine ones has gone down, so it's probably a bit harder than ever for the average consumer to tell the difference and avoid the scams. Here are some tips I hope might help a bit. Firstly, there is a fairly consistent relationship between price and capacity. It's not exactly linear because the largest capacity devices on the market tend to be the cutting edge, so they command a higher price. The price versus capacity graph probably looks something like this. So if you find a device that looks like it has a really low bargain price for its size, it's much more likely to be a scam than a genuine bargain, especially if the capacity is right up there at the cutting edge. Nobody that makes a large capacity storage device, even if they manage to make it cheaply, is very likely to sell it cheaply. If they could just price it competitively and make a lot more profit, you might find bargains that deviate from the line on the graph a little bit. But if it's significantly below the curve, it's more likely to be a scam than a bargain. The old saying about if something's too good to be true. Nextly, most of the cutting edge development in terms of the newest, largest capacities is being done by brands you've already heard of. I'm not telling you to be a slave to brand names, and of course there are numerous fake branded items out there too, but Samsung, Kingston and SanDisk, for example, are offering genuine one terabyte flash storage products. Brands you've never heard of, like the device in this video, branded Boju, or this one which looks like Samsung but is actually Sansung, or this one where the brand is apparently memory card, are going to be fake. Furthermore, as I say, there are branded fakes out there, and these are harder to avoid. It used to be the case that buying from a physical bricks and mortar retail store, or from something like the brand storefront on Amazon, would be a guarantee that you'd be buying the real thing. But sadly, these corners of the market have also become polluted with fakes now. So, finally, when you buy something, test it. Like you saw me do in this video, there are a number of solutions for this, including H2TestW that I used, Fake Flash Test, RM Prep USB, Burn In Test, and F3. This is unfortunately a bit of a nuisance as it's time consuming, for the reasons already mentioned. It's verifying and counting the actual storage, not just checking what the device claims about its properties. But you know what else is a nuisance? Losing the only copy of an important photo or video by putting one of these fake flash devices in a camera. It's worth investing a little bit of time testing when you first buy it. So that's the state of fake flash storage scams in 2023. Worse than ever, I suppose. I'll be back in a year or so to say largely the same things again with just different numbers. I hope this has been useful. Thanks for watching, stay safe from scams, and I hope to see you again soon.